cheetahs are low tier trash. The fastest land build in the game has a ton of flaws in its game plan, which you could learn about in this video here if you like. But enough about cheetahs. What about the second fastest? Do you even know what it is? How does it stack up against its competition? I talk a lot on this channel about how overpowered the animals in the Africa server are. And while that's certainly true, the North America server also has its fair share of builds with ridiculously OP stats, including one little known build with the second fastest run speed in the entire game. You might expect it to be a type of big cat, maybe a close relative of the cheetah, like the mountain lion, or perhaps a type of servid, like a deer or elk. But no, it's actually the smallest member of the giraffe family, one that most players probably wouldn't expect to be related to the giant that we know and love the American Pronghorn. The Pronghorn may not look like much, but it sports some pretty impressive stats including the second highest base mobility stat of any terrestrial animal, with only the cheetah having a higher top speed. This makes it faster than every other build in the North America server by a substantial margin. Pumas, bears, and even wolves have essentially zero shot at closing the distance to a Pronghorn player. Pronghorns have much more endurance than most predators, and are able to maintain these high speeds for significant distances, not just short sprints as most predators do. Pronghorns also have horns on their head which can deal decent damage in a pinch, although it's pretty rare they'd actually need to use them for anything other than dueling against each other. Still, these sharp, keratinized horns can definitely do some damage. Pronghorns aren't particularly stealthy because of their bright white back end. However, even with how noticeable they are, if you ever see a pronghorn, it's almost certain it sees you first. Their eyes are incredibly sensitive and can detect movement from 4 miles away. Because of their huge field of view, this makes it borderline impossible to sneak up on a pronghorn unless your build has some insanely high level stealth abilities. Pronghorns have one of the lowest HP stats of any North American ungulate. They of course share a server with builds like the elk, moose, and buffalo all with a massive health bar, making them near impossible to bring down solo. Conversely, pronghorns rely entirely on their speed stat to keep them safe, and can't really afford to take any damage at all. For the most part, the pronghorns' general game plan works great. Because they have the ruminant ability, their food is abundant, as they're able to digest grass, shrubs, and even cacti if necessary. They also are able to consume plants that are toxic to builds like sheep, cattle, and horses meaning they don't usually compete for resources with livestock, and so as long as they don't get careless, pronghorns are usually able to evade most conflict. So why is the pronghorn so uniquely fast? Its immense speed stat legitimately feels like overkill, and I would argue that in the current meta, it absolutely is. However, the pronghorn has been one of North America's top survivalists for a long time, through several balance patches and expansions. And during the Younger Dryas expansion, there were additional, speedier threats that the Pronghorn player base had to contend with, namely the American Lion and American Cheetah. These Felid builds were extremely dangerous to a lightweight, evasive style build like the Pronghorn. The American Cheetah, in particular, had a max speed stat roughly equivalent to its African and Asian counterparts, but was also bigger and bulkier than the modern Cheetah. And so during that particular ranked season, the Pronghorn wisely opted to max out its speed and endurance in order to evade attacks from these American Felids. However, these Felids were banned with the launch of the Holocene Balance Patch, leaving the Pronghorn hugely overtuned for its remaining competition. Still, this didn't mean automatic success for the Pronghorn. In fact, their player count was dwindling up until very recently. The reason for this is that Pronghorns are extremely poor vertical jumpers, and so they're heavily impeded by any sort of barrier. They require open terrain with good visibility in order to remain competitively viable. So when human players started constructing barriers made of sharp metal, things got really dangerous really fast for the pronghorn. Most of the herbivore builds in the North American meta can easily clear the vertical of an average barbed wire fence, but pronghorn players usually opt to crawl under barriers if possible. Because of the pronghorn's low HP stat, even relatively mild chip damage from barbed wire fences can deal lethal damage to a pronghorn. This issue was really frustrating to deal with as a pronghorn main, and so most of them just opted to play characters with better vertical mobility. But eventually, the human player base realized how unfair this tech was, and opted to self-impose a ban on the tech in important areas. As a result, the pronghorn player race has recovered massively and is no longer at risk of collapsing. So I don't know if I can quite give them an S-tier rank, 
Since they're highly vulnerable to disruption, any sort of major balance patch imposes a lot of barriers into their territory. In addition to the obvious things like human structures, like roads and fences, any increase in woodland biomes would also severely hamper their ability to detect predators or run for long distances to escape. This is the main reason why pronghorns, despite still being faster than any of their potential competition, have failed to make an impact in biomes with less open spaces, such as the woodland tundra biome of the backcountry of Canada, or the jungles of Central America, where stealth-based builds like the puma and jaguar have more of an advantage. Now, to be fair, having an unfavorable matchup versus a jaguar isn't saying much. They are the undisputed top-tier predator throughout the entirety of the Central and South American jungle biome. But it would be impressive to see them diversify their playstyle a bit to see if they could be more competitive in less open terrain, as their other giraffoid ancestors used to be. Especially since the pronghorn's other main weakness is made worse by the fact that they spend time in completely open spaces. That weakness being their vulnerability to aerial attacks. With no tree cover, pronghorns have nowhere to hide from the one predator that actually is able to keep up with them, the Golden Eagle. They may be the second fastest land build in the game, but if you include flying builds, most birds beat this speed pretty easily, especially predatory birds. Still, it's hard not to respect a build that managed to adapt so effectively that its strategy hard countered the game plan of their main opponents, driving them to complete and total irrelevancy. Then again, is it really that big a flex that a variant of the Cheetah build ended up not being viable in the current meta? I wouldn't be that surprised if, given enough time, the African Antelope mains also started specking into higher speed or greater bulk in order to invalidate the African Cheetah's only favorable matchup. Anyways, with all that being said, I'm going to give the Pronghorn the rank of A tier. This video is brought to you by my next video on Rhinos, already up on Nebula. Pronghorns are successful despite having some of the smallest horns in the game. They're pretty much the polar opposite of the rhinoceros. I've mentioned the rhino in passing several times in recent videos, but I've never made an entire video dedicated to discussing their strategy's strengths and weaknesses. That is, until now. I've got an entire video all about the rhino. It'll hit YouTube in a few months, but the full thing is already released on Nebula. Nebula is a streaming service owned and operated by and for creators like me, and thanks to their support, I can not only do these flashy edits, high quality stock footage clips, and custom 3D animations, but I'm also now able to be one video ahead, one month in advance on Nebula. And it's not just me, channels like Real Engineering and Extra Credits are also uploading their content one full video ahead, not to mention high quality exclusive originals like Real Life Lore's Modern Conflicts, which explores modern wars that couldn't possibly be captured with YouTube's restrictions, or Real Science's Becoming Human which uses gorgeous 3D animations to explore the evolution of the human build. Best part is, with my link, you'll get a 40% discount on the annual plans, which comes down to as little as $2.50 a month. So if you want to support me and every independent creator on Nebula, use the link down below to get the discount. Special thanks to all of my Nebula and Patreon subscribers, and thank you for watching.